Hey y'all, have you ever been on a camping trip and you get to the end of the day and you're trying to get your kids in the shower and all of a sudden you run out of hot water? Well, in order to avoid the tantrums, I'm really excited for this upgrade on my hot water heater. It is a tankless hot water heater sent to me by Rec Pro. I'm really excited about this install, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your propane is turned off unplug your shore power, also disconnect one of your battery terminals and disconnect the water supply coming into your camper. The next step is you're going to release the pressure in your hot water heater and you're going to remove the plug and drain all of the water out of the hot water heater. So in order to relieve the pressure, you get the pressure relief valve and you just kind of tilt it up like that. I have already relieved the pressure and drained this. So it's okay if you hear a little hissing, that's just the pressure being released from the valve. After that, get an adjustable wrench and you can remove your drain plug. Mine's already pretty loose. Twist it off and then your water will just flow out and you can let the entire thing drain out. Now for our next step, we're going to disconnect our propane source right here. So you'll need two adjustable wrenches for this. One is going to go right here and your other is going to go on this nut. And then you pretty much just turn it. And then it breaks loose just like that. So the next step after you have scraped away some of the silicon right here, I just get my finger and I can kind of push it through. And that way we don't hurt the propane line right there. And that is it. So we can move on to the next step. After your propane is disconnected, you need to locate the water lines in the back of your hot water heater. Um, mine was fairly easy. It was in the underneath compartment of my fifth wheel. So I came back here, so we'll start disconnecting the water lines. So this is the hot water. There's also a cold water line down there, but we'll start with this. And basically just twist it off. like that and you can set it to the side. The next thing you do is disconnect your cold water line. Mine actually, there's no way to twist it off. So I ended up just cutting it and I am going to reconfigure the water lines to make it fit a little better. Your next step is to disconnect the wiring. So just take the wire nuts off. If there is not a wire nut on here, it is okay to cut it um, and then you can strip it and add wire nuts later on. Now, if your electrical does not have a wire nut on it and it has something that looks like this, you can feel free to cut it with a pair of clippers. Uh, just, you know, cut the wires and you can strip it with your strippers and then reapply wire nuts at the end. Now that all of your electrical and plumbing is disconnected, we can go ahead and take off the outside trim screws and then the whole unit will slide out. All right, we can close the door and then this is ready to be slid out. Um, sometimes the butyl tape gets stuck, so you can use a putty knife to kind of work it in and loosen it. And then after that, I grab it from the bottom and the whole unit slides out. Just like that. Now, if you can imagine, this hot water heater only holds six gallons, so you can clearly see why after one or two showers with the kids, it runs out of water very quickly. Now, nine times out of 10, the unit is going to be a direct replacement. It will fit exactly in the hole that was already there, but in my case, that was not true. My hole needed to be about an eighth of an inch bigger, so I went ahead and used my router to make the hole bigger. So let me go ahead and set that up and show you what it looks like. All right, so what I did to router out my hole is I just got a piece of scrap wood that I had. I have these deep throat clamps that work really well for um, projects just exactly like this. So let me show you. I put the wood up there. I used my clamps to clamp the piece of wood up. There's one right there and another one up in the corner here. This isn't exact, but just to show you guys 
what I did. Uh, I got my tape measure and I measured the distance from my router to the edge or from my router bit to the edge of my router. I set it up there. I set this at the correct height and I basically used this as a guide for my router and drug it all the way across. Most people don't think of using routers for something like this, especially on aluminum. Most people only think about using it on wood, but it's such a versatile tool, um, especially if you need a, a quick trim like this, it works really well. It's one of my favorite tools and it's got so many uses and I use it all the time on most of my projects and my repair projects on campers. Now, before we get ready to reassemble the fittings and stick the unit back in, we need to make sure that we're gonna have a nice clean seal. So just take a putty knife and basically just scrape off the old butyl tape that was around here, just to make sure that you get a nice clean seal so it is waterproof. All right, we are almost there. Um, now it is time to assemble the fittings. So let me show you guys how that works. Um, we will need a couple things from the hardware store. First is a half inch T. We also have a half inch coupling, a half inch by five inch nipple. Um, I have a three quarter to half inch coupling. And then we have the pressure relief valve that I also got from Rec Pro. So go ahead and add that to your cart as well when you're purchasing your hot water heater. You'll also need two adjustable wrenches. I also have two types of Teflon tape here. This one is for water, and then this one is for gas, which we will use on our propane connector. So when you put on your Teflon tape, it is important to remember the direction that the tape goes, because if you thread it in the wrong direction, when you screw your fitting in, you're gonna unthread your tape. So just keep that in mind when you are threading your tape on. And I'm gonna come around here. So we are going to thread our tape on first. And just a couple wraps around is good. And if you get a little bit of scragglers right there, just kind of push it to the side with your finger. You don't want any of the tape going inside of the fitting itself. So next you can take your T and we will screw the T in. Okay, and it's getting pretty tight right there. So what I'm gonna do next is get my nipple and then we are going to thread this one as well. So how do you know you're threading your tape in the right direction? Well, let me show you an example of the wrong way. So this is threaded the wrong way. So when you put it in and you start twisting it, you can see it starts to bunch up and it's kind of pulling off right here. And that is what you don't want to happen. So let me unthread it and take this off and re-thread it the correct way. All right, so this is threaded the right way. So now we can tighten this up and the tape is not binding up as you can see. So that's exactly what we want to happen. And you can ask after that, you basically just go and thread all of them and then we can assemble them. Okay, now for this nipple, you actually only have to put Teflon tape on this one side. The other side is going to be your water inlet and it's got its own washer on it, so you don't need Teflon tape on this side. So let's go ahead and screw it in. Okay, just like that. So now we have our fittings on, we can go ahead and talk about the pressure relief valve. This is extremely important to have in all units. Uh, so the tankless is no exception. 
When the pressure builds up in the system and there's no way to release it, that is a huge safety precaution. So we add this just to err on the side of caution so we can relieve the pressure if the system malfunctions. We are going to go ahead and thread this. So let me double check to make sure which way it threads so I don't thread it the wrong way. So if I thread it this way, that means my tape needs to go this way as well. And now I will say this pressure relief valve is actually three quarter. Um, some pressure relief valves are half inch, so that is going to be something that you're going to want to look at for the relief valve that you buy. You may not need this three quarter to half inch adapter, you may just need the half inch coupling. So definitely make sure to pay attention to what size your fitting is on your relief valve. Okay, now that we have that, we can get our adjustables. And just snug it up. That's already pretty snug. Okay, that should be pretty good. Now that our pressure relief valve has the correct fittings on it and we have our T ready to go, we can go ahead and install our pressure relief valve. Okay. All right. Now, two things to note when you're looking at the direction of your fittings. One, you see this is kind of sticking up this way. Um, scooch it back here. It is really hard to adjust this T because there is no flat spaces to put wrenches on it. So I left it in this spot for a reason. So now that I have this on, I can take my hand and I can push it down. And that basically just tightens the T fitting without you having to uh, damage your fitting with a pipe wrench or anything else like that. Your pressure relief valve is also going to be facing downward. That way, when you, if you have to release the pressure, it can drain straight down. So in order to do that, get an adjustable wrench and put it on a flat spot on the relief valve. And then you can get another adjustable and put it on one of your other fittings just to kind of hold it and stabilize it. And you can turn your valve downward I'm gonna turn mine a little bit angled like that and I can adjust it if I need to once I get inside the camper and hook up the water fittings. Okay, now nine times out of 10, you're not going to have to reconfigure the water lines. That was not the case with me again, so I'm glad I can be a guinea pig for you guys just in case you have a worst case scenario like I did. Now on the original unit, the water lines were on the right hand side and on my new unit, the water lines are on the left hand side. So I needed an extra 10, 12 inches of water lines for them to be able to extend over so there wouldn't be pressure in the lines. Now I just went ahead and made my own water lines. Um, I will work on a video for you guys on how to create water lines. Um, it's super simple to do. It's just a couple things, just a couple supplies. So I have reconfigured these and I will install them and then we can go ahead and put our unit in and hook everything up. Now to replace the water lines, I need to start by taking this crimp ring off. So I have a little tiny screwdriver and kind of just pry it in there and work it around until the crimp ring comes off. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay. Now you twist it and it should come off. All right, next I have my new water line. I have my crimp fitting on here that is not crimped yet. So I'll stick my new water line on and then slide my crimp ring over and then get my special crimp tool. And then 
my new water line is attached and ready to go. All right, next, um, there's no good way for me to get this other fitting off that's right here. So I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to replace it and put new fittings in. <laughs> Just twist off the fitting. Goodness gracious. All right. Next, I'm going to install my new fitting. I don't need any Teflon tape on it because there's already a washer inside the fitting. So I'm just gonna screw this on. Tighten it with an adjustable. All right, next we are going to install our new uh, cold water inlet. Put it there. I'll move my crimp ring so I can see it. And I am going to wait to crimp this until we get the unit in. That way I can make sure uh, it's still flexible uh, and it's in the right place when we put it in. So we are ready to slide our unit in. All right, now that we have our water lines installed, we'll go ahead and do a test fit of the unit to make sure the water lines line up perfectly. All right, let's stick our unit in. All right, now let's go check the lines from the inside to make sure they all line up. And it looks like all the lines fit perfectly, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out. We'll put some butyl tape on it, and then we're ready to hook up our water lines. Now next, we're going to be applying our butyl tape, and what that does is it helps your seal be completely waterproof. If you've ever had any water damage in your camper, then you're well aware of the steps you need to take to prevent any water intrusion. So that is what this butyl tape does, is it keeps your seal completely waterproof. All right, we're going to peel the butyl tape back and we'll start applying it all around the edge of the hot water heater. So you can do one side, take the tape off, and then continue around the other sides. Now, RecPro does sell the butyl tape and the screws kit, so make sure to add that to your cart along with the pressure relief valve when you're checking out. Okay, now that we have made our way around, I'm gonna put one more strip right there um, because we're gonna have three screws that go on the exterior of the camper and we want that to be waterproof as well. Okay, now that we have all the fittings on, we're gonna go ahead and apply the tape to the gas line. Now 
and some people actually don't do this because it's a flare fitting, but I like to do it just to be on the safe side because a little extra precaution never hurt anybody. Perfect. Now we are ready to install the unit inside the camper. So let's go over there and I can show you how to do that. Now that we have the unit in, we can go ahead and hook up our red, and then we can hook up our blue water line, we'll hook up our propane, and we'll do the electrical next. Next, you can go ahead and connect your propane. Use two adjustable wrenches. You can put one right there and one right there and snug it tight. After that, you have your pressure relief valve right here that I have um, screwed in a fitting to, and that actually goes into a hole and into the bottom of the camper and out the bottom. That way you can pull your pressure relief valve and the water goes out of your camper instead of staying in your camper. Now, these lines right here are just three quarter inch lines. You can buy them at any hardware store um, and it's just flexible tubing. You can just feed it right through the floor of the camper. Okay, next we'll go ahead and do the electrical. So we will untwist these wires. You have a red and you have a black wire. You also have two blue wires. The blue wires are gonna to go to your controller, so we'll deal with those in a minute, but we need power coming to the water heater. Okay, now we have four wires that originally are coming from the camper from our old hot water heater. So how do you know which two wires to hook up? I took a wild guess thinking it was gonna be my red and my green wires, and in order for me to test it, I went and I hooked the battery terminals back up, I turned the hot water heater on, and I took my meter, and I tested these two wires right here, and it turns out I have 12 volts. So I know that the green one is gonna be my ground, and the red one is going to be my power. So I know these are the right two wires, so I can go ahead and hook the red one up to the red wire, and the green one up to the black wire. We'll twist these wires together, just like that. And we'll take our original wire nut, and we'll twist it on. Just like that. We'll do the same thing with our ground wire. And I like to twist the wires together just in case. So they're all nice and wrapped up in there. Wire nut. Okay. Now for these two, you won't be using them again. So you can just put a wire nut on them and um, just kind of keep them off to the side. Okay. Next, we are going to hook up our controller. Take your wires and just combine them. Just kind of wrap it around because it's super long. And then you can get your wire nut and stick your wire nut on that one. Now, polarity does not matter on this, so you can pick whichever one you want to go on whichever wire you want. Okay, next we have to mount our controller. So in order to do that, turn it to the back. There's a little tab right there. You press the tab, it pops open. And just be careful when you're prying it open. Just be gentle. Okay, just like that. Okay. So now we have the back plate off, we can mount our two screws right there and just pick a spot that is fairly easy to get to that you'll be able to mount it to. You can feed your wire back through the back. It just clips in like that. And we are ready to screw it in from the other side of the camper. Now all we have to do is uh, put the provided screws in and then we'll be ready to test our hot water heater. Now 
Now that we have our hot water heater installed, I just wanted to remind you of a few important things. Always check for leaks. Um, you don't want to get out to a campsite and then turn it on for the first time and all of a sudden it doesn't work and you have leaks everywhere. So definitely check for leaks. Just um, You can either air test it or you can just plug water into it and see if water comes out. I want to say a special thank you to Rec Pro for the hot water heater. I'm super excited. My boys are super excited. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. I will put the links in my description for my social media. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more.